Hey everyone, I just finished making this kiln and it is super hot and super efficient. It's hitting temperatures that would even let me possibly do cast iron. And with that bottle, which is a standard 100 pound or 47 kilo bottle of propane, I could run this system at 1000 degrees Celsius for 52 straight days nonstop. This is part two in my series of melting down aluminum cans and recasting them into blocks of aluminum that I can then machine out into parts. So basically in this kiln, it's a forced air fan system. I can adjust the speed and flow of the fan. Propane comes in right here to mix for an air and propane mixture. They enter here at a stainless steel burner. They swirl through the kiln and exit out here the exhaust. I can use the exhaust pipe here to preheat things like molds I'm gonna pour into. There's two lids at the top that open in different ways. One gives me direct access straight into the crucible and nothing else, and the other is to get into the whole thing. So the gases enter here at the bottom and they swirl around the crucible before leaving at the top over on this side. This should keep the gases in contact with the crucible for a long time as they swirl through the kiln. It's also gonna minimize cold spots as it swirls through the whole area. And then the crucible is just shorter than the sidewalls here. So when I open the top lid here, I have access to the crucible to add material, but the gases are largely segregated from the atmosphere in here, which should hopefully minimize oxidation during the melt. And this is just a standard silicon graphite crucible. It's a super simple design. It's crazy hot super efficient and I'm about to walk you through how I built the whole thing from scratch. Just a quick reminder that likes and subscribes really help the channel grow and I'd love to hear your comments down below. Any ideas or suggestions are always welcome. The main part of the kiln will be made out of refractory cement and I'll cast that into molds. So the first thing to do is to get the molds created and I'm going to try something I haven't done before which is actually 3D printing the molds. I can design and print the exact shape of the molds and I can do it in multiple pieces so that hopefully they'll release really easily once the refractory cement is cured. And I just want to highlight this printer real quick, and I'm not sponsored. This is a Prusa MK3. It's a bit of an older machine, and they have newer models, but this thing is an absolute beast. And if someone was looking to get into 3D printing, I definitely recommend looking at Prusa, and I'll link to their website down below. They're really the top of the line, in my opinion, for home models. Now that I have all the parts printed out, I need to prep them so that they'll release really easily from the molds once they're cured. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over and sand all the edges that will be touching this refractory cement. Next, I'll give them all a coat of polyurethane and this will both help the molds release and also protect the plastic from the moisture in the cement as they're setting up. Okay, these are all ready to go. They've all got two coats of poly with a quick sanding in between and now I'll get them assembled ready for casting. And this system here is designed to be able to easily release from the internal. The casting will be around it and I need to be able to get this out of it. So this can close together, which will create space to get everything out. I'll spray the molds down with a silicone release spray. I'll mix up the refractory cement and it wants to be pretty dry. It wants to be just wet enough that you can make a sort of snowball out of it and it'll stick together without cracking. Now I'll just pack it in really tightly into the molds. And I'll let them set up overnight before removing them from the molds. Now the castings are all done, they need to set up for a couple days before I fire them. So I'm gonna start working on the burner. I've got all the pieces laid out here and I'll just walk you through how the whole thing will go together and work. I'll start with the propane side of things. First, there's a pressure regulator. This is adjustable so I can control the amount of propane flowing in and thereby control the heat. There's a gauge that'll be screwed into the regulator so I can monitor and alter the pressure. Next is a flashback arrestor. We'll go through some hose to a shutoff valve so I can really quickly shut on and off the flow of the propane. Then it comes down to a nipple that will have a MIG welding tip threaded into it. 
This has got a really tiny orifice, and that'll choke the amount of propane down to just a trickle, but it's still able to get a ton of heat out of it. And then this socket just gets welded in here to connect this whole assembly into. And now the forced air side of things starts with this fan here that is adjustable so I can control the amount of airflow going in. And this is gonna be pushing air into this black pipe system. It's gonna come around here and meet with the propane. So coming down here, it's a forced air and propane mixture. It's gonna hit these 290s, which is gonna cause a lot of turbulence and mixing so that the air and the propane are thoroughly mixed then as it comes down here, it's gonna meet this stainless steel burner. This is a series of three concentric stainless steel pipes that will be welded together. This will remove a lot of the turbulence and create a nice direct flow into the actual kiln and being stainless steel, it will also hold up to the intense heat. So from about here, it should be cool enough to touch but then this will actually be exposed to quite a bit of heat as it enters the kiln. So now I'll get all this fit together and assembled and take it for a test burn. Now I need to plug up this nipple so that I can drill it out and thread it to insert the MIG tip. So. I've just got some brass rod and I'll cut a little section off of it and braise it into place. This is actually a little too small, so I'll just squish it down a little bit to make it a little bit fatter to get a good fit in the nipple so that I can then drill it out and thread it to add the MIG tip. In the final design, I'll braise this in, but for now, for testing, I'm just gonna use some solder. That's a great fit and ready to go on. Next, I need to drill a hole into the corner of this elbow so I can weld this socket in and I'll be able to thread this in here. And I want the propane coming out here to be centered and in line with this part of the elbow. So I need an offset hole to come in right about there. So I need to cut this hole next. So I'm just flexing up this joint and I'll be using silver solder because the large fitting is cast iron and the smaller fitting going into it is mild steel. Now I need to make the burner. So I need to essentially get each smaller pipe to float in the middle of the next size up pipe. And I'll use some stainless steel rod to weld the three pieces of pipe together so that they're all concentric. The burner's all welded up and ready to go now, but during the welding process, the corrosion resistance gets contaminated. So I need to passivate it to restore that. And I'm gonna do that by just putting it in a pot of hot water with normal food grade citric acid. And that is gonna restore the corrosion protection. And then I'll be able to test out the burner system. I'm gonna heat it to about 150 Fahrenheit or 65 Celsius. And then I'm gonna just cook this in it for about 15 minutes. Now I'll just rinse it thoroughly and it's good to go. Now all the parts are ready and I'll just finish up the assembly. All right, that should do it. Now time to go test this. I've got the fan turned all the way down and I'll always turn the air on first so that I won't ever get any propane pooling up so that air is pushing through. I've got the propane set to about two PSI. So we're starting out nice and slow, and here we go. All right, it's on. So now I'll dial up the propane a little bit. And that wants some more air. I'll get you in close to check this out. All right, that went great. As soon as the castings are done curing, I'll get it all put together. So I'll be back in a couple days for that. Now I'll cut out the metal parts to make the shell. You could do this by hand with a grinder, but it's quicker and easier for me to just do it on the CNC table. 
Here's all the parts ready for assembly. I'll wrap the main body in high temp insulation. And the whole thing gets a steel shell for protection and to keep it all together. Both lids also get a steel shell to add protection and to allow for a hinging system so that it can be opened up from above. Next I want to add a couple holes so that I can put temperature probes through to take temperature readings. I want to put one right about here so that the gases have come in and they've swirled all the way around and they're about to be leaving. So I'll be taking that temperature reading and then one right here in the middle in the top going down and this can take the temperature on the inside of the crucible. Next I'll add some weld on hinges. There'll be one on the top lid on this side and one for the bottom lid on this side and they'll be in line with the airflow. And I'll add some handles. All right, it should be ready to go test and do the initial curing burn. All right, so it's up and running and everything's looking great so far. It's dialed way down. It's at just under one PSI of propane and that's coming through a 0.8 MIG tip. So there's barely any gas going into this. The fan's dialed way down. Uh, it's running at about 400 Celsius right now and it's 140 inside the crucible. It's really important to cure the refractory cement slowly. So over five or six hours, I'm gonna slowly ramp up the temperatures to about eight or 900 Celsius. Um, we might push it at the end and just see how high we can get. But for now, I'm just gonna slowly let it cook and I'll check in with you in a little bit. Okay, so it's been chugging along for about four hours now and this thing is great. First off, I wanna mention that I added a fan dimmer so that I have more control over the fan. I can dial down the speed of the fan in addition to using the fan vents. So I have a lot more control over the airflow. The propane's at only one and a half PSI and it's been cruising along at four hours and it is holding at a steady thousand degrees Celsius, which is about 1800 Fahrenheit. That's around the crucible and inside the crucible, it's 875 C, which is 1600 Fahrenheit. I'll show you inside in a second, but I ran some calculations on the propane and this thing is so efficient, it's crazy. At one and a half PSI, the system's using about 0.07 liters of liquid propane an hour, which means with that bottle, which is a standard 100 pound or 47 kilo bottle of propane, I could run this system at 1000 degrees Celsius for 52 straight days nonstop. This thing is crazy efficient and super hot and it's dialed down about as low as I can get it. I'll crank it up in a minute to see what kind of temperatures I can get out of it. But first, let me walk you through what's going on at just one and a half PSI. So the air system here is cool enough to touch right here. So I'm not getting any heat back here. This is cold and this is just fine to touch right here. The handles are cool enough to touch without gloves here. It's a thousand degrees on the inside. I'm not gonna touch the walls here, but they're, they're gonna be pretty cool relative to that temperature. And the exhaust is coming out right here. And right about there, it gets really hot. This is gonna be useful because I can preheat things using the exhaust. So when I go to cast the aluminum, I can preheat the forms by just placing them right in front of there. So this is direct access to the crucible right there. I can just be adding in aluminum without having to open up the whole thing. And then if I open up the whole thing, you can see here the whole thing's cooking. And again, this is basically as low as the system can run. 
Now I'll dial it up to four or five PSI, see what kind of temperatures we can get, and that should do the final curing of the refractory cement. All right, here it is at four PSI. The roar got a lot louder, and temps are already starting to climb. So I'll let this sit for an hour or so and see where we get. All right, it's been about another hour. I turned it up to about three and a half PSI, and it's at 1170 Celsius, or 2136 degrees. This thing is screaming hot. It's getting close to the temperatures you need to be even be able to do cast iron. So with a little tweaking, I might even one day be able to try to do some cast iron. And even with this thing being even hotter, with the increased airflow, it's even cooler to the touch right here. This is 2150 degrees right inside here, and I can just grab this, no problem. This build turned out great. The refractory cement should be just about cured now. So I'm gonna do a slow cool down over a couple hours. I'll be back soon with the next video where I'll go through the full process of turning cans into fresh aluminum that I can mill down for parts. I got a ton of ideas on how to get the best aluminum possible at the end. And I think it's gonna be a really cool video. So I'll see you again soon. Hope you enjoyed this one. And thanks for watching.